Stereotact, a guided breast biopsy, is a minimally invasive procedure that calculates the exact location of a breast abnormality and enables removal of a tissue sample. Calcifications and masses are some of the abnormalities that can be biopsied using stereotactic guidance. This presentation will feature the Affirm Upright Breast Biopsy Guidance System for use with the Selenia Dimensions Mammography System and the ATEC Sapphire Console with the Aviva Breast Biopsy Device. Designed to work seamlessly with any Selenia Dimensions system, the Affirm Guidance System delivers exceptional images, accurate targeting, and streamlined workflow. The Affirm Guidance System is compatible with most breast biopsy devices, including Hologic's ATEC and Aviva products. A variety of Aviva needle options are available to address all of your patient needs, regardless of lesion location or breast tissue composition, including 9 and 12 gauge options best suited for stereotactic breast biopsy, as well as petite options. The Affirm Guidance System is an ergonomic, lightweight system that can be mounted on the Selenia Dimensions gantry in just seconds. To prepare for the procedure, the Affirm System is installed on the Selenia Dimensions Mammography System. The Affirm Biopsy Control Module can be mounted on either side. The Selenia Dimensions System will recognize that the Affirm Guidance System has been installed and will automatically default to stereo mode. To begin the procedure, position and compress the patient's breast using the appropriate Affirm Biopsy Paddle. The Affirm Guidance System offers a full selection of biopsy paddles, including a standard paddle, wide paddle, and axillary paddle. The specially designed clear paddles provide greater visualization as compared to metal paddles, making it easier to reposition for scout images if necessary. A scout image followed by a pair of plus and minus 15 degree stereo images are taken. Images can be taken in either auto or manual mode. Click Accept to save the images. Enhancement tools allow zooming and adjustment of contrast to help ensure accurate targeting. Select the appropriate biopsy device from the Affirm Biopsy Control Module drop-down list. The ATEC and Aviva biopsy systems are pre-configured to automatically calculate the needle position and safety margins. The physician now initiates one or more targeting sequences by simply clicking on the lesion in both stereo images. Once the target is selected in both stereo images, it will also appear on the scout image to verify accuracy. Up to six targets can be selected. When selecting the target with the Affirm Guidance System, the Cartesian coordinates are automatically calculated to determine the precise position of the lesion in the X, Y, and Z planes. When coordinates are sent from the acquisition workstation to the biopsy control module, a graphic shows the biopsy needle and the target on the touchscreen color display. The next step is to cleanse the skin surface thoroughly with an antiseptic solution. With the Z dialed to the most negative position, secure the Aviva Stereotactic Adapter to the stage and tighten in place. Check to make sure the adapter is secure and not tilted. Turn the Sapphire console on if you power down after test and setup. Remove the protective sheath from the biopsy device and assemble the introducer onto the device, leaving the protective sheath in place until you're ready to place the biopsy device on the adapter. Confirm the device is in the pre-fire or cocked position by fully depressing the white button. For added patient comfort, a syringe containing anesthetic material can be attached to the Y-valve to deliver additional anesthetic to the biopsy cavity during each excisional cycle. Using a septic technique, place the disposable needle guide in the holder on the adapter. Next, install the Aviva biopsy device by sliding the needle through the needle guide and locking it into place at both the front and the back of the adapter. Check the security by gently pulling back on the device. Activate the automatic targeting system by pushing the motor enable buttons to move the device to the identified X and Y coordinates. Using the manual Z dial, move the Aviva needle tip to the skin surface to ensure accurate anesthetic placement. Inject anesthetic to numb the skin surface at the area of interest. 
the tip of the biopsy needle will extend beyond the target site, so it's essential to administer anesthetic to all affected tissue by injecting deep to the target site. Remember, if a syringe of pain medication has been attached to the Y-valve, this delivery system will also assist with patient comfort. Use the Z-control to advance the needle close to the skin before creating the skin nick. A skin nick allows easier entry prior to advancing the needle to the biopsy site. Manually advance the needle into the breast until the differential coordinates for X, Y, and Z reach zero on the biopsy control module and all three differential boxes turn green, which indicates that the biopsy device is in the correct position. Depending on your facility protocol, take a pair of pre-fire stereo images to determine that the area of interest is correctly targeted. Activate the Project Target button to ensure that the injection of anesthetic has not caused any lesion movement. Next, fire the Aviva biopsy device by fully depressing the green button on the remote firing mechanism, advancing the needle to the target. Again, depending on your protocol, take a pair of post-fire images to ensure the center of the aperture is at the area of interest. Rotation of the thumb wheel allows the physician to acquire cores at any clock position. The position of the aperture opening, or clock position, is indicated by the numbers located on the middle section of the device and by the tactile line on the thumb wheel. The physician places their hand on the thumb wheel at the rear of the device. The physician depresses and holds the foot pedal to activate the biopsy system throughout the tissue acquisition sequence. Tissue acquisition occurs every four and a half seconds. Typically, six to eight core samples are adequate for pathology purposes. An audible beep indicates that you are at the end of an excisional cycle and that it is safe to turn the device to the next clock position. When the necessary core samples have been retrieved, the physician releases the foot pedal and switches the console to lavage mode. Lavage mode continuously delivers saline to the biopsy site and aspirates the biopsy cavity, cleansing tissue and other fluids from the site. The cavity should be lavaged 360 degrees until the fluid in the collection chamber turns from red to light pink, indicating the cavity is clear. To retrieve the sample cores, leave the console in lavage mode and disconnect the saline line. The cores are now ready to be retrieved from the tissue collection chamber. Rotate the collection chamber to remove the container. Remove the tissue filter basket and place a new one in the collection chamber. Place the collection chamber back onto the device and reconnect the saline line. Tilt the tissue filter basket toward the specimen collection dish to avoid losing any samples. Using your fingers, grasp and pull the thin metal wire at the top and around the tissue filter basket. Use the wire spatula or forceps to separate the tissue samples on the prepared surface to be imaged. The specimens may now be taken to be imaged. Continue to lavage and aspirate the biopsy cavity to help prepare the site for biopsy site marker placement. When you have verification that the samples have been successfully retrieved, disconnect the saline line and continue to aspirate to help prepare the cavity for marker placement. Return the console to biopsy mode to close the biopsy device aperture. Remove the biopsy device from the adapter, but leave the introducer in the breast. If desired, you may now place tissue markers and acquire post-clip images. When the procedure is complete, remove the introducer and marker assembly from the adapter, release compression, and immediately apply pressure to the biopsy site. When pressure is no longer needed, Apply a Steri-Strip or other bandage. Appropriately dispose of all used product, such as device, marker deployment device, canister, etc.